Welcome in, everybody, once again to Titans Tube. My name is Justin, and as always, this is my co-host, Jake. Uh, we haven't gone anywhere, have we, Jake? It's been a minute, though. It's been a minute yes. since we put out a video. Yes. Uh, but that's, I don't know, what do you want us to talk about? The Pro Bowl? The Pro yeah, Bowl yeah, last week? Yeah. I don't think so. Um, how's it going, Jake? How, how have you been? We've got a Super Bowl coming in here uh, this Sunday here. Pretty exciting. Um, that we do. And then that that's we it. Do. And then that's it. Football's yep. over, but it's over. Unless yep. you're an off-season fanatic and you just love breaking down all off-season scenarios and free agency and the draft and... I don't know how much we're going to get into that, Jake. I kind of mm -hmm. just like talking about the games, really, to yeah. be honest with you. I'm not you, really a, a numbers, salary, cap, draft kind of guy who we getting in the fifth and a half round. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, so, but we'll fair. see. We'll, we, we'll probably have some videos for you guys coming out soon. But uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, what's going on, Jake? How are you doing, sir? All good. I'm doing great, man. Yeah, I, I mentioned uh, in the uh, picks video for the conference championships that, you know, Please don't let Tom Brady into another Super Bowl. It's going to ruin kind of Titans street cred of knocking him off last year. And, you know, look what happens. Mahomes versus Brady in the Super Bowl. Who in a million years would have thought that, Justin? Yeah. who? Yeah. It's the no, passing of the torch Super Bowl. I mean, we were spared from the State Farm advertisement Super Bowl with Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. Uh, you know, my, my, my uh, NFL picks favorite uh, Green Bay Packers didn't quite finish the job against uh, Tom know. Brady, but um, all, all is well. I'm looking forward to the mm. Super Bowl. I think it's going to be a really good game. I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are kind of getting hot at the right time, really putting it together at the right time. You know, the Chiefs are three and a half point favorites. We'll get into that for our Super Bowl pick, but uh, yeah, man, uh, there's some Titans news to be talked about. Obviously, the offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator positions for next year have been filled uh titans fans yeah. have had some choice thoughts and feelings of, <laughs> towards those two promotions uh obviously hired within uh but we'll, we'll get into that justin uh, just glad to be back making a video Ooh, i hear you dude me too me too so yeah we're gonna talk about uh the super bowl coming up make our picks there and talk about this titans news and then we're gonna end on a happy note and talk about mine and jake's th top three titans moments of the season since to be honest, guys, it kind of still ends on a sour note. I mm -hmm. never like losing, and I hate losing in the playoffs, and I especially hate losing to the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, but we're going to get to that. We're going to end on a, on a good note to close out this season of Titans Tube. Uh, but, Jake, last week, yeah, we've had this competition going on, Jake, and I have held the weekly picks lead throughout the entire season up until about the playoffs, and then you mm -hmm. just kind of usurped my lead and took the lead, and it, it kind of came to the conference championship picks. And I believe I went 0-2 picking against the spread, and you went 1-1, one and 1-1, one, one one. correct. Or 2-0. Yep. Oh. Uh, we had lost the Packers game. So, so, you're right. So, ever since we picked against the spread, which I think was in the playoffs, I believe I was somewhere in the range of 1-5, and five, I think, was my was my record. Mm -hmm. Or it could have been like 1-7, and seven, something like that. It was, it was god-awful. I don't want to ever pick against the spread or pick with the spread uh, again. But uh, yeah, it was my idea in the first place. I, I, I know I kind of feel bad about bringing up the idea of it's picking all the playoff games against the spread just to kind of spice because, you know, we were picking a lot of the same teams yeah. come end of the year. There's clear cut favorites in some of these games. So, you know, I kind of apologize. But then again, I, I ended up winning the NFL pick. You did on crowd. purpose. So I, you know, I, you know, what you're doing. I, I, I knew what I was doing. It was diabolically schemed all year. Oh, <laughs> uh, God, of course. All right. Well, well, congratulations, Jake. Uh, yeah, I, I, we'll, uh, we had a hoodie on the line, the AFC South champ hoodie, but we'll, we'll see. I'll send you something as a reward. I mean, I'm a man of my word. We'll, we'll get, we'll get the prize going here soon. But anyway, Absolutely. let's talk about, let's talk about the Super Bowl pick, Jake. Uh, Packers going down to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last week and the Bills magical run. Well, our magical season, I guess, comes goes to an end uh, against the Kansas City Chiefs. Like you said, though, no, no huge surprise there. I was disappointed, Matt. Dude, Matt LaFleur, I mean, everyone's already talked about it. It's a storyline in the past. Mm -hmm. But going for the field goal down eight points with two minutes left to go, that's, 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 that decision-making isn't going to win you championships, I don't think. I mean, I was very Obviously didn't. I was definitely I was definitely hitching my wagon to uh, the, the the Green Bay Packers, but uh, but never more. It's it's Bucks, Chiefs, Jake. Uh, what's your initial thoughts, takeaways from this game? What, what are you expecting to see here? 
Uh, you know, just I gotta I gotta make a little comment on that Matt Lafleur decision from uh, the conference yeah. championship week. People wanted to absolutely come out with pitchforks and torches for Mike Rabel for punting with ten minutes left in the fourth quarter. Justin, <laughs> yeah, that's just all I'm saying. And Matt Lafleur is I mean he didn't get off scot free by any means for that decision. But nobody's kind of pitchfork torches once Matt Lafleur out of Green Bay. Obviously he came out in the press conference said it was the wrong decision. I mean, dude. A field goal doesn't do you any good, and giving the ball back to Tom Brady with two minutes left is suicide. I mean, it's, there's no yeah. two ways around it. Uh, just just a tough way for Green Bay to go out. But, yes, uh, Super Bowl week coming up here. Obviously, Tampa Bay Buccaneers hosting, playing a home game, Justin. Oh, Who else uh, but Tom Brady to be hosting the first-ever Super Bowl in his own stadium? Uh, and, you know, they are home dogs in the Super Bowl, Justin. And it, and it kind of comes down to you don't bet against Tom Brady. I mean, he, he has shown the world that he is the greatest to ever play this sport, uh, just kind of flat out. Absurd amount of conference championship appearances, obviously going for his seventh Super Bowl ring, playing in his 10th overall Super Bowl. And I just think, you know, they are the home dogs, Brady, as an underdog in the playoffs. I I, Tom Brady has made me a believer, and that is the reason I am going to take the Tampa Bay Buccaneers plus three and a half yeah. in this game. Uh, I think it's going to be closer than people think. The Buccaneers' defense swarms to the ball so incredibly. I wish I watched the Tampa Bay Buccaneers' defense, and I think the divisional and then the NFC Championship game, just wishing and daydreaming. What if this was the Titans' defense? We'd be playing in Tampa this week. So oh, you know. Yeah. I think that defense is going to have at least a few answers for the Kansas City offense. I think it's going to be kind of a high-scoring shootout affair. Um, but, yeah, give me the Buccaneers plus three and a half. I didn't think I would go in that direction, but but here I yeah. am at the end of the year picking Brady in the Super Bowl. Dude, yeah, it, it shocked me so much. I, not shocked me so much per se, but even during – in. Uh, Middle of the season last year, I specifically remember saying, like, you know, this Bucks team is nice. It's decent. They may win one playoff game and they get bounced, but I feel like that's their ceiling right now. They just seem really vulnerable. But like you said, they're, they're catching fire. They look almost unstoppable, really. I mean, they're, they're very balanced on both sides of the ball. Uh, I don't know. You kind of want to see more out of their running game because that's, that's not really there with Le- Le- Leonard Fournette and um, uh, Jones, Ronald Jones and company. Mm-hmm. Uh, but really, yeah, it doesn't really matter when when you have Tom Brady back there. Uh, and as as the week has gone on, the past two weeks have gone on. Yeah, I I'm really just sitting my, to myself thinking, dude, Tom Brady is really gonna do this. He's really gonna pull this out and win his seventh Super Bowl. It which hold on, side note by the way, this Tampa Bay team last year was was Jameis Winston really holding them back that much what else is different about this Tampa Bay team besides Tom Brady being the quarterback you take away t- uh, Jameis Winston who you know he's not the worst quarterback in the world but yeah I mean he's way too turnover prone way too uh sling in the rock kind of wherever he goes decision making kind of poor uh, he's got fantastic arm talent though but was he really holding this team back that much? That blows my mind that here they are in a Super Bowl with just Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that, that's pretty amazing. I guess that speaks to, yeah, t- Tom Brady's greatness. And I don't know. Yeah, because they had a great defense. They had all the key pieces on defense there, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. The same weapons on offense. They did add Antonio Brown and Rob Gronkowski. But, yeah, but yeah. And then even with Antonio Brown, you got Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, uh shoot I mean they've, they've, they've got plenty of, of ability on offense and weapons to mm-hmm. go to, to to get the job done so I don't know man the, the Chiefs defense is gonna have to show up and play uh, so it's gonna be a huge game for Kansas City's defense uh, and how's you know other side of the ball how's Patrick Mahomes gonna look scary concussion moments dude the way he got up and just kind of wobbled I mean mm-hmm. ugh, that is a bad look for the NFL and player safety but <laughs> they, they're not gonna keep Patrick, it's Patrick Mahomes, Mahomes. Out of the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he could be he could be wobbling out of the tunnel, and they're like, "Yeah, he totally cleared concussion protocol." Yes, we we need this guy to play for for the ratings and the money and all yep. the good stuff there. Uh, anyway, um, so you know, I'm I'm still excited. This should still be an exciting game. You know, I I was I was honestly going to pick Tampa Bay because just the stars are aligning in, in that in that Go way. Go for it, for, dude for him but you know it's boring whenever we both pick uh, the same team did you pick them to cover the spread are they gonna yes 
Oh yeah, I yeah. Think Tampa Bay to cover the spread. Yeah. Maybe not win the game, but I think it's going to be tightly contested okay. enough for Tampa Bay to cover that spread. They're, they're whatever. I, I've I've given up hope. They're going to do it. Stop betting against Tom Brady, people. This is ridiculous. He just beat Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers in back-to-back weeks in the playoffs. And Taylor Heineke from Washington. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he went through Don't a disrespect ca- that legend. gauntlet of quarterbacks, <laughs> including yeah. Taylor Heineke. Absolutely. And now it's, it's the new generation, the, fa- the new face of the league and Patrick Mahomes. And can, can Tom Brady really, uh, really just, just, you know, stamp his foot down even more as, as the greatest of all time? Mm-hmm. I, I'm honestly still rooting for the Chiefs. I mean, I, I, I have not gotten Kansas City fatigue like I've gotten Tom Brady fatigue. Uh, but I mean, you got to respect it either way. But yeah, man, you're a fool. You're a fool to bet against Tom Brady at this point. So give me the bucks. I'll take her and win the game, dude. I, why not? Their, their defense is is as long as Tom Brady had a really competent defense in New England, he was probably going to win the Super Bowl that year, and he yep. has that in Tampa Bay. And you know, obviously, the old adage: defense wins championships. Um, they yeah. What did the Packers have? Twenty six points. What was that? Thirty one to twenty six game. I mean, oh you take that against mm-hmm. the best offense in the league. So defense did their job. I expect him to come out and, and play a great game against Mahomes again, getting pressure on him with Shaq Barrett and Dominica Sue and, and, and company, just a bunch of studs on that front seven. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's how I see it, man. Super Bowl number seven for Tom Brady. Goodness gracious, what reality is this? He's going to be 55 and going to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yep. He'll be playing some quarterback who's in, you know, eighth grade right now or maybe even younger, uh, you know, (laughs) going for his 12th, 13th. I I like what you said about, you know, Tom Brady coming to Tampa and elevating the whole squad. Even Bruce Arians, I think, had a presser quote that was like, it really only took Tom to to come here to elevate this team to this level. And it's it's incredible. You know, and another little Brady caveat, I can't believe I'm on camera gushing about Tom Brady for the internet. But I thought, did you one. see, did you see, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is the last one. It's like Amy's back on, uh, you know, did you see uh, right. he was going to wear number seven if he didn't get number 12 for the, you know, his quest for his seventh ring. Uh, if Chris Godwin didn't yeah. give him the number 12, I thought that was kind of cool. I thought that would have been kind of very, you know, stone cold sheriff-esque of, of Tom Brady to kind of just wear that on his sleeve like that. Uh, but, but anyways, yes, yeah. stop betting against the goat, Tom Brady. Oh man, yeah, I can't. I can't believe it, <laughs> dude. After the Titans bounced in playoffs last year, I can't believe we were supposed to, to be the ones. We were the ones to to take up the the mantle of an AFC elite team dynasty. Maybe it could still happen though, Jake. Uh, Fingers crossed. So I guess I guess with that being said, uh, that's gonna wrap up our picks. We got both both of us got the butts cover the spread. You possibly are leaving the window open for Kansas City to still win the game, but it's going to come down to three points or less. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Hopefully, you know, regardless, can't get mad about an exciting football game. So, fingers crossed for that, at least. Hopefully, it's a back-and-forth battle between these two teams. Um, So, yeah, man, with that said, do you want to talk about uh, this this Titans news? We'll transition here uh, Mm -hmm. into some, some hirings. (laughs) <laughs> uh, that have been, like you said, a little questionable. A lot of uh, people voicing some choice, voicing some choice thoughts. Uh, so, sure, man. Well, let's start. Okay, let's start with the less controversial one and the mm-hmm. offensive coordinator Todd Downing, who uh, has been the Titans' tight ends coach for the past two seasons. And I mean, that's pretty good. That's pretty good track record so far of tight ends mm-hmm. coaching uh, being elevated. Uh, positions. It goes back to like Mike Malarkey. He was a tight ends coach for us who then became head mm-hmm. coach Had Arthur Smith for a few years. He became the offensive coordinator. And now, you know, I like how Todd Downing, you know, he it was at the tight ends coach position, but was also under Arthur Smith these past mm-hmm. two seasons uh, play calling. So um, briefly uh, prior to that, he does have offensive coordinator experience. Todd Downing. He was the offensive coordinator for the Raiders in 2017. I think they uh, they were like a middling offense. They finished mm-hmm. like in the middle of the pack. So I don't know. That's I don't know. Take that for what it is. Uh, that was his only season as an offensive coordinator and play caller. He then goes to Minnesota uh, for the next season, 2018, and was the tight ends coach there. Uh, and then, like I said, with us these past mm-hmm. two seasons. So so very familiar with the tight end position, at least. 
Um, yeah. But I, you know, my brief takeaway from this is <clears throat> I do like how I feel like we're going to incorporate the same stuff, the same system Arthur Smith was doing. This was working for us. Let's keep it going. Hopefully, you know, Todd Downing can pick up where we left off, uh, you know, th this past year. Well, not exactly where we left off, literally, yeah. with the Ravens' mm -hmm. performance in the playoffs, obviously. But, you know, whenever you promote from within, it's like a, eh, eh, well, you know, you want to make the splash hires, you, whether it's players or coaches. You want to go after a hot shot, up-and-comer. Uh, but, you know, it's it's kind of worked out for us the past couple years as offense goes, at least, uh, to hire, to promote from within. So I'm okay with this. Uh, yeah, I don't even know. Like, yeah, there were some other names floating around out there. But, you know, this isn't the worst thing in the world. He's got – last thing I'll say, and then I'll throw it to you. You've got Tannehill to work with. You've got Henry to work with. You've got A.J. Brown to work with. And you have Taylor Lewan coming back. Probably all of the most key pieces on your offense. They've all been to Pro Bowls. Uh, so that core right there of those four guys, yeah, I, it, we got great personnel still. I, I still think this offense is going to be a successful unit in 2021. So, yeah, I, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with, with Downing. What about you, man? Yeah, I mean, you hit it right on the head. I'm really happy you brought up his stint as the play caller for the uh, then Oakland Raiders in 2017. If you think back to that, that's the year after Derek Carr, uh, big leg injury, same leg injury as Mariota. He's coming back from that. Yeah, they were kind of middling, but he really didn't have an elite offense like he has in Tennessee right here, right now. I like, you know, I, you, yeah. you nailed it, dude. <clears throat> It's not a sexy hiring, but he's got weapons and continuity. If continuity is key, I would love to see, you know, more of the Titans offense we saw last year. I mean, that's by no means a bad thing. And, yeah, you know, promoting within, never sexy, not really a splash name. But, you know, it, it'll, it'll get the job done, especially, especially yeah. if he can utilize the weapons like Art Smith. However, uh, that's a nice little segue, Justin, to the other side Clever. of the ball where the Titans also promoted from within – uh, Shane Bowen gets the official nod to be the Titans defensive coordinator. Now, all the players came out, you know, after this season, if there was a defensive coordinator, there really wasn't one named, but if we were to say who it was, it was Shane Bowen. So this is the man who's responsible for your 2020 Titans defensive campaign. I mean, obviously Mike Vrabel's got some oversight, but this is the guy who's, you know, job is to get these players communicating on the same page and communication as we saw with the Titans defense last year was sorely sorely lacking um you know yeah a, a lot of Titans fans including myself this is the one you know where you start talking about Mike Vrabel is he making correct decisions here you know we just watched a full 17 game span of some of the worst meddling worst third down defense were you know they were middle of the road scoring which is maybe a silver lining but you know this defense was historically bad in, in several statistics this year um, I will like to point out I'm going to try and flip that on its head a little bit Justin because you have to remember all of the key pieces this defense did not have this year Adoree Jackson obviously headliner there mm -hmm. misses the first 13 games of the season he came back he was not really the same player after missing that much time we'll see you know if he can progress next year you know, he might be fighting for a roster spot this year. Who's, who's to say? Uh, going down the list, Jayon Brown misses six games. You know, your premier linebacker back there. Uh, Jadavion Clowney, as, you know, as I kind of laugh as I say that name, he missed half the season, eight games. He was supposed to be your premier pass rusher. I mean, he was a little bit disruptive at times. Obviously didn't get the eye-popping statistics you wanted from a guy who you just shelled out for in free agency. But – that's neither here nor there. He missed over, you know, he missed about half the year. And then Christian Fulton, the guy mm -hmm. you brought in as a rookie to be, you know, to kind of back up a Dory Jackson and Malcolm Butler, he misses 10 games this year. So you're playing, yeah. you know. Fill, fill the uh, the Logan Ryan void, if I can exactly. jump in there. Yeah. The, yeah. You kind of, yeah, the, the nickelback corner, who's, who you can line up, you know, in the slot or kind of all over the field we, uh, yeah we were missing that Le Logan Ryan I guess until Desmond King came in though I thought he did a nice job but yes yeah. uh yeah Christian Fulton yeah out, out for most of the season too yeah and then you go down the list even you know your third and fourth edge rushers uh obviously being Vic Beasley overall dud you know you, we can just kind of wipe that away and then Kamalea Correa who provided a little bit of pass rush for the Titans in 2019 he ends up you know trying to request a trade walks obviously goes in place for Jacksonville. So, you know, the Titans spent, you know, the majority of the season 
you know, with only one legitimate starting corner, Malcolm Butler was playing out there and, you know, not really a, a good name at pass rush other than Harold Landry. Um, so it's just, you know, th this Titans defense, if it's going to work, if Mike Vrabel goes back to the drawing board, they're going to have to bring back some players, get them healthy, get this personnel kind of in line. And, you know, as bad as the defensive was, I, I don't think Shane Bowen is, a, is an idiot. You know, I think he knows that the defense was lacking last year. So does Mike Vrabel. I don't think he thinks it wasn't a problem either. So those guys are going to have to go back to the drawing board. And, and you know, it kind of comes down to who the Titans pick up in free agency on, on the defensive side through the draft defensive side. I don't know, man. Do you have any kind of take on Shane Bowen, the guy <laughs> – the guy got, uh, you know, a promotion for the job he did in 2019 or 2019, yeah. 2020, which was poor. Have you ever been, Jake, in like a managerial uh, position and like your your sales are down, you, everything is down, your performance is just slacking to record lows and your boss is like, how would you like a promotion? That doesn't happen, but that's almost what it felt like there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but still, like, yeah, I'm not defending the move necessarily, but what do we know really as fans? I know you you pointed out a lot of the missing pieces, and, I mean, it could go even longer. Like, I think we were also relying yeah. on Derek Ro Roberson to come back and provide pass rush help, and that never really happened either. Um, but, yeah, it's, it is it is a little head-scratching, and as fans and people that don't understand – how all of this works, uh, much like Vrabel, John Robinson, Shane Bowen. I mean, come on, these, these guys are paid paid to do this. And yeah. yeah, it kind of looks bad from the outside looking in, but you know, how how many times were the players not maybe executing their job uh, uh, to what they were supposed to be doing? And how much was it scheme related? Were, were these players being set up to fail or were they being set up to have success, but they just weren't getting off blocks? Mm -hmm. They weren't uh, hitting, hitting the gaps, hitting, hitting the holes when, you know, on running plays to, 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 you know, shorten, shorten running gains. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, I'm not, I'm still not like defending it. It still is an odd move to, to still roll with Shane Bowen. I mean, again, talking about some of the particular players on this defense, some of our best players from two seasons ago took major regressions this year, most notably Kevin Byard. What a drop off that we saw mm -hmm. uh we d i don't hardly remember a single splash play byard made except for week one when he forced a fumble that's pretty much it yeah every now and then he would break up a pass every like other game perhaps but mm -hmm. he, he he wasn't your your flashy uh, uh ball hawk that he's been since he's uh, been in tennessee and rashawn evans too man he had a great 2020 season uh, or I'm sorry, a 2019 season, but then in 2020, you know, the, the penalties started uh, started building. He didn't seem like that impact player you could count on week in and week out. Uh, you know, a player you're counting on to take yet another step up, a 2017 first-round draft pick, mm -hmm. no, 2018 first-round draft pick, uh, you know, in his third season, take yet another step up, but no, he kind of, he kind of you know, took, took a step down. Maybe Jayon Brown going out, out with injury. Uh, had some to do with it but uh, I don't know yeah just kind of looking at the particulars and like why did we see regression so drastically in in particular players and overall defensive performance and I don't know I mean it is kind of easy to look at the defensive coaches and to point the finger and be like that's the biggest factor we got no DNPs uh, mm -hmm. you really never got the uh, the presence that Logan Bryan provided and then obviously Jarrell Casey was a big impact because our pass rush dude yeah, it was it was non-existent. So I don't know. Like, well, let's roll with it. Maybe these coaches are seeing something and seeing reasons why the defense played like it did, and maybe didn't want to throw any coaches or players under the bus, particularly. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about it. I, it's not worth getting mad about and staying mad about for the next eight months. Uh, <laughs> but man, if if the defense doesn't improve and maybe we can talk about expectations for 2021, just kind of vague mm -hmm. expectations. If this team misses the playoffs or goes one and done in the playoffs again, and, and doesn't really look like they were contenders, even from the beginning, maybe we're talking about variable on the hot seat in 2022, because I mean, these are the kind of coaching hires that can lead you on that path very mm -hmm. quickly, but 
but let's not be too hot takey at the same time because this hey. franchise is in a fantastic spot still. I mean, yes. man, we're like five straight winning seasons. Come on, come on. Let, let, let's not get too crazy here, people. Um, but yeah, and yeah, yeah, at the end of the day, the Titans were eleven and five, won the division. You know, and the defense it was good enough to at least yeah. yield eleven wins. I mean, the offense obviously solely responsible, but we're seeing a trend like that yeah. in the NFL where it's you know get great on offense and do just enough on defense. You know, or get you know be a little bit top third of defense. You don't need, you know, the 2000 Ravens or, you know, the old Chicago Bears monsters, the midway defense to get it done. Uh, that leads us uh, nicely into a couple of questions. We got Justin from Twitter. Uh, our guy, Kenneth, Texas Sports 1015. Shout out to yes. our guy. He's always watching the show. Um, he mentions uh, Mike Vrabel and kind of being stubborn. You know, we, we can get a little hot takey here if we want, Justin. I, I thought you were leading. You teed up this perfectly. Are you concerned okay. – this is, this is Kenneth's question. Are you concerned Mike Vrabel won't fire his friends who are bad at their jobs like Shane Bowen? This, now, this was before – he had asked this question before he was promoted. So this age, like, fine wine, nice work, Kenneth. Um, we have had head coaches named Mike not budge on their staff who are friends before, obviously alluding to right. Mike Malarkey situation that ended up kicking him out of town. He wouldn't get rid of Terry Robisky on the offense and it cost him his job. This you're seeing Mike Rabel not get rid of Shane Bowen. Am I concerned about Mike Rabel's blackhead ego though, Justin? You know, I love to uh, name drop him like that, but uh I, you know, I, I said it a little bit earlier. I don't think Mike Rabel's, uh, you know, a, a dumb guy. I think he's very – obviously, you said it. We're, we as fans just watch. And these guys get paid millions of dollars to go out there and actually do it. And Mike Rabel has only had really quite a successful tenure in Tennessee thus far. Obviously, Shane Bowen, obviously some head-scratching decisions. We'll see. I, you know, I'm going to give Mike Vrabel the benefit of the doubt this year. Obviously, like you said, I, I think you said it perfectly, Justin. Um, you know, if this defense doesn't take at least a step forward and be average instead of, you know, historically bad, uh, yeah. and, and this team loses its championship window that we have talked about all year long, you know, they kind of have two, maybe three, if you want to be optimistic, years of contending here with Derrick Henry – Ryan Tannehill running the show. This, you know, Shane Bowen sticking around could be a thorn in Frable's side, you know, come the 2021 season. I don't know. Do you have any other any other thoughts on it? I, you know, I don't know why, but Vrabel kind of strikes me as someone that would move on from his friends if it meant his friends yeah, or his job. And I don't true. think that's necessarily a bad thing to say about somebody. Like you said, Mike Malarkey did it. And even Mike Munchak did it. He didn't want to part with, you know, Bruce Matthews and some of his really good friends that were on his coaching staff. Um, so, I, you know, yeah, I think if the defense, especially if that's what's going to save Malarkey's job, if the defense sucks next year too, he'll probably be like, all right, Shane, I'm sorry. It didn't work out, but yeah. it's your head or mine, and I'm the head coach, so <laughs> you got to go. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, because I, I still like Mike Vrabel, you know, Overall, as the head coach, as the rallier, as the leader, as the, uh, for the most part, the end game manager making major decisions, does have some goofs sometimes it seems. But overall, I, I think I think he's got what it takes to be a quality head coach. We've seen it so far. How many head coaches can say they've ripped off four straight or is it three straight winning seasons, their first uh, three mm -hmm. years as a head coach? Um, so, yeah, I, yeah. So we'll see. I I think if the defense does take a regression, then obviously I don't know how we can regress further. But if they don't make an improvement, then you've got to look out elsewhere at, at defensive coordinator, and really just kind of look at Mike Vrabel in the face and say, look, you got to have your hands like off this defense. You're the head mm -hmm. coach. Bring in a defensive coordinator. Uh, and then that's that's how we're rolling moving forward. I mean, I, maybe I, – I don't know what Jay Rob is thinking through all of this or if he's, like, on board. Like, yeah, you know, Mike, I, I see I see what you're talking about. Yes, let, let's promote Shane and then keep this going. You maybe incorporate this in our scheme, draft a few players, and we'll, we'll be just fine. Maybe that's what it will take, but uh, don't, I don't know. I We'll see. It's an uninspiring move. But, you know, like you said, Vrabel has earned the benefit of the doubt – for a few more seasons, like that AFC championship run, definitely, yes. you know, put himself in the goodwill of this fan base and this team uh, as he, sh as it should. So mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know. I don't know. I haven't been really watching and keeping up with other, you know, Titans YouTubers or uh, just fans on social media, but I guess it would seem like most people are not excited and are a little bit miffed about how we handled the defensive coordinator yeah. position. And you you were kind of getting there. There's nowhere to go but up, you know. Can they? I think they can only yeah. really improve. So yeah, give them give them at least one season. Uh, not quite time to push panic button yet. Even though I I totally understand the the uninspiredness of this hire. Um, we have a second quick question from Kenneth and talk about. Nowhere to go but up. Uh, He says, what would be our plans to fix the pass rush? Are you wanting to spend in free agency again or go multiple draft picks on pass rush in the draft? And, and, and yeah, Justin, we're, we're not really the, you know, GM kind of guys, but I have a hot take for you real quick. I'm going to throw a little name out there and and it's, there's starting some rumblings, the scent of a rumor. How about, how about, a guy I don't like, you know, I've been raving about guys I don't like lately, but J.J. Watt. What do you J. think about J. that? What do you think about J.J. Watt on the Titans, Justin? Just face value, give, give me what you got there. Dude, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pickle. I have hated J.J. Watt his entire <laughs> career. Not, not necessarily the person, of course, but as a player, rooting against him and just how he has, has owned us and he is a showboater when he tackles us and sacks us and intercepts us and forces our fumbles, uh, which, I mean, he's earned the right to brag every time. But, man, he just he gets under my skin every time we play him. But having said that, yes, I would take J.J. Watt on, on this Titans team. I think he's got more left in the tank. He's got a couple more seasons in him. My thing is, is there's no freaking way J.J. Watt would do that to Houston and do that to the franchise. I, I have, he's been not no way. very happy with them. He hasn't been happy. He's he's talking as much well, with you know, the, crap with the media as Deshaun Watson. With the franchise itself, I guess. I guess I'm more so talking about the city and the fan base. Like, that would be mm-hmm. such a betrayal. And he's the one that's been very vocal about, oh, the Texans should get the Oilers history and we should wear these throwback uniforms, yeah. even though they're a completely different franchise. I don't think he likes the Titans in, like, a competitive sense. I don't think – I just don't really see him wanting to come to a division rival, much less the Titans. I, it's hard for me to see that from his perspective. But as a Titans fan, yes, we could definitely use J.J. Watt. I would like to sign him uh, if we can. Uh, but that's kind of my thing when yeah. you're talking about free agency or the draft, is we don't have any money, right? So we're going to have yes. to hit in the draft on pass rush. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's a lot of appealing pass rushers out there, like Shaq Barrett, I think I saw, and uh, – I know, there's a couple more. Carl really Lawson good pass from rushers. the Bengals, I believe, is going to be available in free agency. Okay. And, yeah, we don't have that much yeah. money to spend. Obviously, the Titans draft last year, talk about uninspiring performances. The Titans draft class last year wasn't much help in the season uh, the, the season following. Uh, you know, uh, Kenneth, you know, we're not really the GM guys. John Robinson will get paid to do that. But, you know, I just wanted to point out that J.J. Watt, for the right in the right situation, plays out right price. He's going to bring a veteran voice to this defense that I think they need. Obviously, you said earlier in the show, Justin, they're missing Jarrell Casey and they're missing Logan Ryan, two of the older guys on defense who were leaders and you know communicators on the field. J.J. Watt could provide that for the Titans. And he and just at face value, Justin, he had five sacks last year. One, two, three, four, five. You know who the Titans' that leading, would have been leading sack er was? Harold Landry with 5.5. Yeah. Big freaking whoop. Right. Pretty much the same. J.J. <laughs> Watt would have been right there with Harold Landry leading the Titans in sacks you know, last year. I know he, he's yeah. kind of beat up, might not have a lot left in the tank, but right price, right situation. How's that, Kenneth, for a hot take on, you know, how to fix the pass rush? I like it. Who knows, put him man? next to Who knows? Put him next to Jeff Simmons, dude. That would be a pretty dynamic duo on, on the defensive line right there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure, sure. I, I would take J.J. Watt. I'd I give it a one in a thousand chance. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> fair enough. Fair um, I just wanted yeah. to uh, stay having said that. A bit. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, uh, thank you, Kenneth, for being responsible for this whole Q and A section. We yes. appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate you man. for giving us our, the Many question thanks. on Twitter. Many thanks. Yes, sir. Um, do you want to move on to our last bit here, Jay? Yes, do that you have works anything with else me. We want to say about uh, the uh, the off season changes that are that are coming. Uh, um, more so a video. quick question. Sorry, no. man. Yeah, uh, sorry. No, go ahead with your quick question. I was moving on. Uh, 
more so a quick question, maybe a little bit of doom and gloom, but it's just been something that's weighing on me, Justin, as a Titans fan. I just wanted to kind of air it out, air the dirty laundry a little bit. Uh, we, and this is kind of you know, a lesser sexy topic than our top three Titans moments. I really would, yeah, I like that we're ending the show on that. But I just want to ask you the simple question. In your eyes, Justin, you've been a fan of this team, you know, forever. Was this season a letdown for you? Oh, man. Oh, you know, that's a, it, the bittersweet is the word that comes mm -hmm. to mind. It, it was a bittersweet season. Um, you had the highest of highs winning the division, record-breaking offense, exciting, exciting, exciting stuff. But then the, the, how it ended just kind of, it was like, um, you're, are you a Game of Thrones fan? I am it's not, like a Game but of I Thrones can get into parallel. it. Oh, you should. And then you should stop watching after like season five. Because okay. that's how this Titan season kind of played out. It was one of the best, greatest TV shows, most captivating things I've ever seen in terms of everything. Storytelling, character, uh, scenery, music, production, acting. Oh, uh, the cast was fantastic. It was great. Awesome. This offense was great. Derrick Henry, Ryan Tannehill, airing it out. A.J. Brown. Oh, I was loving it. Give me more. And then – the final season happens, and it's like I kind of just want to forget about everything. I'm, and whenever I remember the great things that happened during the season, it all kind of still leaves a sour taste in my mouth because I know how it leads and how it ends at, at the at the series finale. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it was bittersweet. It was a very fun ride, but then when it came to a crashing halt. It just kind of, it kind of bothers me. And it, there's always mm -hmm. that little bit of pit of sadness whenever I think about how great and promising and exciting the season was leading up to that final, that mm -hmm. final game. So I would say bittersweet. I think it, it's still a step forward. You love to win the division. You love to see winning 11 games in a season for a franchise that hasn't won 11 games since 2008. So um, that that's exciting, but yeah, it's, it's still just bittersweet in, in, in how it ended. So that I like be, that answer. Well, that would be my That's a answer. fair answer. What about you? That's fair. Uh, you know, it, it is a bittersweet, a, a, a very good encapsulation of it. You know, Derrick Henry, 2,000 yards. Yes, we want to love that and everything. But if only his postseason performance of last year was this year instead, and it would have just been, you know, chef kiss perfect. Uh, yeah, it's – I know we can go back to our videos week four, week five, week six, you know, when the Titans are still undefeated. We're kind of thinking, you know, there's nobody in the AFC that could beat us. You know, we're not afraid of the big bad wolf and the Chiefs. You know, this could be a Titans year mm -hmm. to make a run. You know, this offense is putting it together. Uh, you know, the defense wasn't overly horrible. They were winning games, so we didn't have to really have a scapegoat with the defense. Uh, but, you know, in the pit of my stomach, I really didn't feel like this was a contending Titans team. Just way deep down. I really wanted to get rosy yeah. pie in the eye expectations, but deep down, knowing this defense and how many you know points a game, everything kind of has to align for Tannehill and the offense to really, really put it together. Uh, so you know, very bittersweet. But I and, and again, like you said, I, I not to you know hop on your answer here, but yeah, it's a step forward for this franchise. You know, nine and seven, nine and seven, nine and seven, nine and seven, eleven and five you know, division champions. It's something to build upon and continue. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you kind of have a blueprint of what, you, what your season kind of has to look like to win a division. Now this team has a little bit of experience in doing that, and now moving forward, uh, you know, they can build on it. I, I like the building block, uh, you know, kind of yeah. fairy tale at the end there. Um, so, yeah, but going but, – go ahead. Uh, real quick, just to add on a little bit to what you said about the uh, – adding a little – it adds an extra bitter layer on it because of what you're saying about how we never really thought this team really had what it takes to actually win a Super Bowl because of what we saw from this defense. But then again, with the bitterness at the very end, it was the offense that didn't get it done. Yeah. And our defense <laughs> yeah. allowed 20 points. So you kind of had this backwards mm -hmm. sense of what is this team? Uh, do we need and to then work it was on all over. offense? Yeah. Or defense. This or is our defense actually okay? Light zone. Mm. Yeah, so it's it's very it's a very confusing, bittersweet <laughs> season. Um, but yeah, okay, that, that's all I wanted to add. Fair Go enough. Ahead. Fair enough. We can get into, into our Titans top three moments of the year now. Yeah, let's, let's uh, get happy. to let's end get it happy. on a kind of happy for our our season recap here. 
Um, all right. You can take the lead. Do you want to go back Yeah. I'll go first. That works. Okay, go for it. All right, so for my my number three moments, and I don't know how you did it. I kind I have some very specific plays, uh, and I don't know if you want to if you have like games in total that were like mm -hmm. top three moments. But mm -hmm. uh, here's the one kind of in between. My number three moment was <clears throat> the first half of the Titans at Colts game, where the Titans went up thirty five to fourteen in a pretty much a must win to really. Mm -hmm. Uh, be compete for the division for the rest of the way. Uh, Derrick Henry goes for three first half touchdowns. Uh, man, just the Titans pouring it on against of all teams, the Colts. It was so beautiful. It was such a feel good, fun half. It was one of the funnest times I had watching a football game in that first mm -hmm. half, Jake. So that's going to be my number three uh, best moment of the Titans season. Moments. Moments. I got you. Yeah. It out. <laughs> yes. What about you? Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I rated these kind of just on my feel good meter, you know, as the season progressed, looking back, you know, when did I feel the best as a Titans fan? Uh, my number three moment is beating Buffalo uh, in the Tuesday night football game, uh, 42 to 16. It's kind of the, just the whole game as, as an entire piece. Uh, it was the one really complete game the Titans put together all year against a quality opponent. Uh, some of the quality, more quality opponents they played, it was kind of a close game. Yeah. Uh, but but this yeah. was one of the most convincing performances the Titans had all year, and they did it when they weren't supposed to have any chance going into that game. They're missing double digits amount of starters, obviously COVID, uh, Ravish, the Titans locker room. They were the first team to do it. The spotlight was on them, and, you know, they came out and, and won in really convincing fashion against a very good Buffalo team. So that was yeah. a very, very uh, happy moment for me. Yeah, man. That, yeah, that was a great game. That was a fun, dominating performance. <clears throat> and how we saw the Bills ended up finishing 13-3. and three. And I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that was by far the worst defeat that they had they faced the entire season. Yeah. So maybe it was a little fluky with it being a Tuesday night game or whatever. But, uh, yeah, the Titans we'll absolutely delivered against a quality opponent. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, good answer there. I didn't have that one on my list. Uh, but for me, number two – um, I feel like most people should have this one on there, but maybe you don't. It's a, it's a one, it's a single play. Derek Henry's overtime touchdown run against the Baltimore Ravens <laughs> yeah. in Baltimore. Uh, it felt so good. It was, it was so beautiful. And then that game was great. I mean, you had the AJ Brown touchdown uh, near the end of the game where he broke a thousand tackles. Mm -hmm. uh, but man, that was just a perfectly executed run and a huge game on the road for this team. Um, I just realized all of my picks were Titans uh, games on the road. We were wow. really better on the road, I thought, this year than I yeah. thought. Uh, but anyway, that, 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 that's mine. Derrick Henry kind of up until the playoff game kind of showing how he owns the Ravens lately. Mm. But, you know, they, they had the last laugh, of yes. course. But still, as far as, you know, being excited, being jumping for joy and loving and having so much fun watching a Titans game, that, yeah, that's my second best moment of the season. Boom. Derrick Henry, OT run for a touchdown. First Baltimore, walk off. I like the it. Second I love walk it. Off of the, yes. Of the season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Uh, you know, I didn't have that one on my list. I thought about it. I, I was thinking it. Okay. But just, I'm okay. still salty. Still got a bad taste yeah. in my mouth about any kind of Baltimore Ravens, anything. Uh, so understandable. Anyways, yeah. my number two was actually your number three, Justin. Derrick Henry's 178 yard free touchdown day. Most of that damage being dealt in the first half in a must-win game against these Colts, who two weeks Beautiful. prior just absolutely washed and rinsed the Titans on national television Thursday night football. Obviously, special teams gaffes out the wazoo. And then they get them, you know, two weeks later in Indianapolis where the Titans don't go to Indy and win very often. Uh, they went in in a very must-win game for the AFC South. And, you know, if they don't win that game, Justin, the Titans do not win the AFC South at the end of the year. So, uh, you know, that was a very high stress going into it. And then obviously Derrick Henry delivers the Titans a huge win. So that's my number two. Boom. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, any anytime. Yeah, it, it's because it's so rare that the Titans not just beat the Colts in Indianapolis, but in dominating fashion like that. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, that, that, was, that was an absolute high point uh, for Wonderful. us here. I wonder my top if my moment, number, Jake. Um, I wonder if our, I wonder if they're going to be the it's same. It's got to be the same. I bet you. 
Yeah, it's got to be. be. It's it's a, it's the two parter. It's the back the back to back plays. Yeah. The final two plays of the regular season, Jake. Um, Tannehill. I mean, I who didn't think this game was going to overtime? Nobody. I can't believe that Tannehill pulled off that throw perfectly right into AJ Brown's bread basket. Had the timeout, and then Slowman. You have to doink it at that point when you're just like a walk-on kicker to add to the extra drama to deliver the AFC South championship to the Tennessee Titans uh, in Houston. Uh, man, going blow to blow with Deshaun Watson on a four-win Texans team. I mean, it was it was a headache. It was those kind of performances, Jake, where we were like, yeah, this team isn't going to win a Super Bowl. Look yeah. at this defense. Mm-hmm. And then a week later, we only give up 20 points to Lamar Jackson. <laughs> yeah. the Ravens, but Whatever. This was the highlight moment of the season because it yep. uh, not only was it extremely exciting and drama filled and suspenseful, um, but yeah, it, it, we won the AFC South on these on these final two plays. So yeah, that's got that's got to be it for me. Is that is that you? Is that uh, my number one is the very exact same two plays right there, obviously, and the cherry on top. Derrick Henry gets over two thousand yards in that game, but those last two plays, Justin, have been. I, I was steaming, fuming mad that this game was even going to overtime. And, you know, yeah. they, they come out in a shotgun formation. I was like, all right, this ball's going to McNichols. He's going to hit the dirt. We're going to overtime. Or, you know, I, before they even lined up, I said, God, sit on it, go to overtime. Like, Jesus Christ. I was steaming. Pray for a, to, a coin flip to go in our yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm hoping the, the coin gods are on our side. Ryan Tannehill drops back and delivers one of the most beautiful throws I've ever seen completed in a Titans uniform. It, I, I, the gusto to launch that ball and put it right on the money to, you know, a, a, an honorable mention for me was A.J. Brown's one-handed catch in Jacksonville, kind of overshadowed oh. in the season. Yeah. But it was at that moment I was like, we really have an elite receiver, finally, finally, finally in a Titans uniform. So just that combination to set up, obviously – uh, Slowman's banked in slow ride kick uh, to win the AFC South. <laughs> so I mean, it, what a Titans way to end it. You know, it, it, it couldn't have been yeah. more perfect at the end of the season. Uh, but, you know, we, we'll just ignore everything that happened after that. And, you know, that's, that's, yeah. those the season are my ended three there, people. Titans moments. Dude, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned um, AJ Brown's one handed catch as an honorable mention. I've got another honorable mention. Uh, pick any Derrick Henry Steph Farm. Yep. And most notably the one against Josh Norman and then the Lions defender. The ones where he like actually throws them yeah. are, are <laughs> obviously the best, Stefan. Yep. So that's going to be re- uh, replayed on Derrick Henry highlights for the rest of his life yep. and after p- post Derrick Henry life. Um, yeah, yeah the, um, amazing, amazing stiff arms that, that will be imprinted in, in our minds forever. Um, yeah, and great, great moments from the season. Very specific. Uh, Stiff arming, even even though the play didn't count on, on Josh yeah. Norman, I think yeah. they had a penalty. <laughs> yeah. But like, you don't ever see that. You never see players it's do that. To each other in the it's NFL. unbelievable. And yeah, I, we said it during the season. Stop and smell the roses. We are watching history with Derrick Henry. I mean, be as mad as you want about the defensive coordinator promotion, how this offseason may or may not go. You know, say what you want about Mike Brable's decision making. We are watching history with Derrick Henry, and we can't thank him enough for the joyful moments of just throwing grown men into the bleachers uh it's just a beautiful thing and we're so lucky to have Derek Henry in the Titans jersey it, yeah it's it and it just all the plays the top moments in general like there's so many things that happened like the first Texans game when Derek Henry popped off for 200 yards we didn't pick any game where he went over 200 yards he did it against yeah. Jacksonville he <laughs> yeah. did it against Houston he had the 94 yard touchdown run uh, just so many exciting moments from the year. It's kind of hard to just narrow it down to three. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, that's our list. You guys let us know which, uh, what, what your favorite moment was uh, of the Titan season in the comments. Um, but, yeah, you got, you got anything else, Jake? Uh, that just about does it. Justin, I just uh, want to kind of end it. I know this is somewhat of our season finale, as we said earlier. We're not really off-season guys. But, you know, they will, you know if the Titans sign J.J. Watt, you know, I'll be right here. Uh, talking oh, about, yeah. but I want to thank you for allowing me to come on to this channel and and do this with you. We made it, you know, Zoom problems and all, internet problems and all. Uh, we made it all the way through the season. <laughs> yeah. We did not miss a video. I missed one NFL picks video, but uh, you know, we we did a full mm. season of content. I can't thank you enough for bringing me on, letting me do this with you. I had a blast. 
thank you to everybody who watched throughout the entire year. Uh, it's been a great opportunity for me. Uh, shout out to all of our guests. Met some wonderful, wonderful people through, you know, Titans picks videos. Right. And, you know, we got to do Lance Smith, you know. Uh, shout out to Chris, Blue Enforcer, everybody, you know, everybody. So thank you so much, Justin. Yeah. And thank you to all of you out there. Man, uh, yeah, the pleasure's all mine, Jake. I'm so pumped that you uh, happily agreed to, to come on the show. Like I've said it before, I probably wouldn't have had a Titans tube season if it, uh, if, if I hadn't have gotten been able to get you to join me here. So uh, appreciate you, man. Uh, we'll, we'll do it again. Uh, I mean, I guess I guess Caleb's fired at this point. I mean, we'll yeah. probably roll in for the next season and, and have we'll, you. On we'll again. have our own contract negotiations <laughs> to do in the off season as well. So. Sounds good. Sounds good, man. Yeah, appreciate it. It was fun, dude. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be back. We'll be back sooner than later. It's not like we're going to go on like a five-month hiatus, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, so thank you all out there, like Jake said. Um, you know, like, comment, subscribe. You know, if you have any like suggestions for jazz. us, it, all that jazz, I mean, that's a new yeah. tagline <laughs> that you brought here to, to Titans Tube, our, our signing off. Uh, but if you guys like have any suggestions or want to see us talk about anything in particular or a subject or a type of video mm -hmm. you would like made about the Titans, uh, yeah, leave us a comment and, and, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll consider it. We will highly consider it. Um, so, yeah, um, I guess that's going to do it for me, Jake. Uh, take us out. Take us out of here. That does it for me. Justin said it best. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. We'll work on the delivery. You know, that's something that we can also work on in the offseason. And, yeah, Maybe I should get a Tannehill shirt. You did a Mari Gota shirt <laughs> the last video of the year. What a choice. What it's a all choice. I had available right now. It's that's all fair. I had available right now. That's fair. I'm sorry. That's I'm fair. ready you, to move on. Do a load of laundry and we'll come back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well said. I'll have a, I'll have a fresh load of laundry before the 2021 season. So I, I That's would a guarantee. So. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, All right. right. Thanks. You guys take care. Take it easy. See ya.